talk a little about your rig and your, your stuff. Uh, and today's rig is pretty simple. Okay, well. As compared to what I normally would be using. <laughs> Which is 19,000. Uh, <laughs> I left a flight case home today. Uh, so this instrument is a Chapman stick. If you're unfamiliar with it, it's an instrument that was invented in about 1974, released in 75, 76. Maybe I'm a little off on a year or two. Uh, this particular instrument uh, is a little more modern than the ones they earlier released with some features. However, the, the premise is the same. Uh, the idea was that the instrument is used in the, such a way that you can do counterpoint, uh, independent hand movements, or play both things at the same time, uh, much like you would on a piano. So if you're doing, if you can imagine ever playing a piano and you have two hands doing simultaneous and possibly different things at the same time, you know, on a guitar, it's kind of difficult to do that. You're limited in the number of strings. You're also limited in the, the pickup height and the, the action. And, and this, this instrument's really designed to actually do what we know as tapping in the guitar industry. So uh, you can strum it. You, you can put uh, multiple effects and things of that nature. But uh, I think its natural tone is, is reminiscent almost of like a harpsichord, piano, and guitar kind of mixture. Uh, you can do chords in, let's say, one hand alone. So these five strings, this grouping of the strings are known as the bass side, and this grouping of the other five strings known as the melody side. Uh, this particular instrument is the alto version of the Chapman stick, where the bass side is tuned an octave higher. Uh, it works well in a band setting. If you've got a bass player, you stay away from the bass side. Mm -hmm. However, uh, so generating energy to create a sound is just by simply tapping on the note like you would on a piano, tap and hold. Uh, so, for example, that's my note OD, right? And uh, that will ring out as long as I hold on the fret until the energy runs out. Or I can do some extra vibrato while it's on it to kind of linger that sound out. I can do multiple tapping, multiple fingers. Uh, also, uh, you can do moving bass lines. different way that a bass would be tuned, uh, rather than uh, ascending fourths, it's tuned in ascending fifths. So from this note to this note is an interval of a fifth, and from this note to this note is a fifth, or the ninth above the original that I started on. The ninth there. To do chords, you can do combinations of the strings at the same time, or you can break it up in an arpeggio fashion. Uh, to your ear, it may sound a little different if you're used to playing guitar or bass or piano for that uh, matter of fact. But you get used to it because it has like a sweet sound. So if I'm doing an arpeggio, doing my root, my fifth of the chord, and I can do my third here, but it's really the tenth. It's like an octave above where the third would be. Give me that flavor of, let's say, a major. I'm using two hands, but in reality, I can do it one. Same time, get the fifth out. Take that third down, which is really a flat tenth. You could do some jazz chords, you can add some sevenths into that mix. Maybe a minor seven, dominant seven, major seven, all one hand. All right? So that frees up this other hand to do either complementary notes, you add ninths, elevenths, and thirteenths uh, for extended chords, or you can double the same note. So if I'm trying to match up, I can complement that uh, major seventh feel with a major chord on top. into piano and you're into guitar, what you could do on this that you can't do on a, a, a piano is actually bend note. Because the piano is quantized, you'd hear this on the piano. Right, so you can't really bend the notes and do vibrato and things. So it's like the best of both worlds. You get counterpoint, you get piano, 
you got a harpsichord type of sound. Uh, this is also a stereo pickup where I have two simultaneous outputs. There's a set of humbuckers on the bass side, a set of humbuckers on the uh, melody side. Right now I have it in mono where I'm combining both for the simplicity of what we're doing tonight to have a nice clear sound. Otherwise, uh, you can independently affect both sides, whether it's the bass side with some chorus and or compression, and the right hand side with delays, reverbs, uh, overdrives, things of that nature. I don't have it set up here today, but uh, you can get the idea. Um, so you can also do accompany yourself with some bass lines. comes from uh, many years of doing research in the, both the digital realm and the analog realm and uh, most recently in the last few years uh, I, I worked with a company that's been endorsed by uh, a company called Analog Alien and, and this company, uh, uh, Jack Napoli and Joe Napoli, run a business out in Long Island where they do a basic boutique pedal shop which make pedals that are more than basic. What they do is they enhance the tone and keep it very clear. Uh, this is this tone here is probably one of the clearest tones I've had in the last 18 years of playing this instrument, and uh, also uh, Mark Vincent Sika is an analog alien endorsed artist. Mark, why don't you come on up for a second? <laughs> 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 say, uh, oh, it's not in the book, right? Okay. It's not so, in the book. Uh, anyway, uh, if you look back here, there's a whole line of analog alien pedals. I think I have most of these, right, Mark? You will. Uh, well, at least two of each. Two of each. <laughs> so I wrote one of one tonight, just I mean, just for the sound. But anyway, uh, thanks for uh, listening to the little stick spiel. If you go to stickmyc.com, that's my website, and you can find more stuff that we do with this band and some solo things. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, later on, you should take a walk up to the cabin and see Tony's face on the, on the, uh, on the poster about the paper. <laughs>